okay, let's say the government chose me. Uh, they were going to use me as an outlet to release this information. Let's just say they did that and they took me to a briefing. Then what, John? Okay, we whisk you to, or they whisk you to <clears throat> Washington, D.C. You get limoed to this building, beautiful building. You go up into this room. Uh, they say, Art, you're the guy. Um, if you give us the go-ahead, we're going to release everything we know to the public. And if you decide to go ahead, all major networks will be provided with information on all aspects of the cover-up. No type of information will be withheld because of the deal for immunity for all participants of the cover-up provides that nothing, no artifact, no piece of information be withheld. So here's what happened, Art. Uh, and, of course, this will call, uh, uh, we'll use some videos and stills. Our first UFO recoveries were in the late 30s. We made a couple in the beginning of the 40s, and then came Roswell, which the public found out about. We got two live aliens from Roswell. One died shortly thereafter. One lived until 1956. And we found out that so far there are 18 different alien species that we know about monitoring Earth. Some are good, some are hostile, most are indifferent. Uh, we found out that we are the experiment or product, if you will, of an alien race who we never met and really don't know who they are. All we know is that the greys are cybernetic organisms, glorified robots, if you will, who work here at the behest of their employers, monitoring us through abductions. Uh, we were never able to find out what the experiment is all about, except that we have been externally corrected about 65 times, and they, the aliens, refer to us as containers. There has been speculation that the souls our bodies contains is the reason for the experiment, but nothing has been proven or determined. Since 1938, we have lost over 200 aircraft to UFO hostilities and thousands of soldiers in all kinds of different kinds of action with aliens. Since that time, several hundred thousand civilians have disappeared with no trace. And several thousand were eliminated by us because of their chance encounters with aliens, which we could ill afford to have publicized. A slightly more frightening phenomenon known as human mutilations have occurred on a regular basis and are similar to the cattle mutilations in that the humans or humans are taken from the street, so to speak, and returned to the same area about 45 minutes to an hour later with their rectums cored out, their genitals removed, their eyes removed from their sockets, and completely drained of blood. In all cases, it appears that the mutilation procedures occurred while the persons were still alive and conscious. One of our scientists speculated that apparently the human specimens had to be alive for the samples to be worth anything. Abductions occur on a daily basis throughout the United States to at least 10% of the population. And when we first became aware of this, we protested to the little gray being that we held in the captivity at the YY2, uh, YY-2 facility at Los Alamos, but a deal was struck that in exchange for advanced technology from the aliens, we would allow them to abduct a very small number of persons, and we would be periodically given a list of those persons abducted. We got something less than the technology we bargained for and found that the abductions exceeded by a million-fold what we had naive naively agreed to. In 1954, President Eisenhower met with a representative of another alien species at Miroc Test Center, which is now called Edwards Air Force Base. This alien suggested that they could help us get rid of the greys, but Eisenhower turned down their offer because they offered no technology. At this, at this point, it became apparent to all involved that there was no such thing as a god, at least as the public perceives god. Certainly some kind of computer recorder stores information, and an occasional miracle is displayed by the aliens to influence a religious event. So this, this so unnerved Eisenhower that he had, in God we trust, put on paper money and coins and put into the Pledge of Allegiance to reaffirm the public belief in God. Shortly after this, it was determined at meetings between the U.S. and Russians that the situation was serious enough that a Cold War should be manufactured as a ruse to divert attention of the public away from UFOs and towards some other scary threat, the H-bomb. Wow. It was also decided to keep the ruse secret from any elected or appointed official within both the U.S. and Russian government, as long as, uh, as it took so long to vet these uh, officials, and the ruse was easier to manage if the top people didn't know about it. In the late 1950s, NASA was formed to compartmentalize, containerize, and sanitize information from all space platforms and vehicles. We sold NASA to the public, claiming that all information would belong to them. Actually, they got very little, and even that was highly sanitized. 
our first efforts were to keep the public from learning about Venus uh, and that it's a similar planet to Earth and that its population is very similar to us but more technologically advanced. Uh, we have learned a lot from them. Starting with the Russian Venera 1 and U.S. Mariner 2, we made Venus look like a lead-melting volcanic surface spewing sulfuric acid into a pressurized atmosphere 90 times that of Earth. And it was often the case we overdid it and wondered why no one ever asked how a parachute survived a descent into 800-degree air. We set up operations in Pine Gap, Australia to preclude any prying eyes trying to figure out what we were up to. We regularly eliminated, through extreme prejudice, anybody who was part of the operation and made the least little tiny threat about disclosure or satisfaction with the operation. Any space mission that included Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Mariner, Voyager, Clementine, and all the rest, all data initially came transmitted to Pine Gap, and then it was relayed to JPL or wherever uh, after the sanitizing. We had a little trouble with amateur radio operators, uh, but we figured out when they figured out how they could intercept these signals, but we managed to deal with that. When the Russian threat began to fade, we introduced Vietnam, which kept the public occupied for over 10 years. The cover-up and the personnel to run the operation began to get bigger and bigger and required more and more money. We were enforced to inflate the defense budget, which soon was not enough. Then we got into the drug business, which was still not enough. We were the ones that looted the savings and loan industry and Wall Street to boot. It is so out of control now, most people want immunity and want out. There, but there is so much secrecy and so many double and triple blinds in place that it is unlikely that this thing can ever be dismantled. And even if you give us the go-ahead to spill the beans to the public, it's unlikely they will get anything more than, yes, we recovered a flying saucer, and yes, there was an occupant, but that's all we're going to tell you. So go ahead and roll the tape for Mr. Bell. Uh, what you see here are, are the human mutilations uh, look like. That one was a male about 27 years old. Uh, now, that film is of dead aliens being pulled from the wreckage of their craft that crashed in Atlanta, California in the 50s. That craft you see over there is, uh, was over 250 feet in diameter and had to be buried on the spot. Uh, that site is in Utah near Dugway Proving Grounds. The object that you're looking at now is the Kecksburg acorn, which was brought to Wright Pat in the middle 60s. There's Frank Drake trying to force information out of a being tied down to that stretcher. He was supposedly from Tau Ceti. These pictures you're looking at now are the structures on the moon. That's the tower in Sinus Medi. It's over seven miles t uh, tall. And that thing there is what we call the Colossus of Agurum in Mary Cusayim. We don't know what it does, but the machine itself is bigger than Brooklyn, New York. Now, those are videos of the domes covering the craters. You can see that some are in a very advanced state of decay. Now, these are five-second slides of the 18 different alien species we are looking uh, at. That one there is the most gruesome looking. The guards at one facility are carefully indoctrinated over a period of several months, being shown pictures similar to, but not exactly like the alien. Only when they have been acclimatized, so to speak, of the horrible looking beings, are they allowed to stand uh, in security positions. Before these acclimatations were done, we had two guards die of a heart attack as these aliens came down the hallway unexpectedly. And this last clip is of the Kennedy assassination You've heard of the second gunman theory. Well, this is the second camera that recorded exactly what happened. We had four gunmen. Uh, and the bottom line was Kennedy had to go. He insisted on releasing what little alien information we had told him about, and he was trying to withdraw troops from Vietnam, which we were using as a diversion for the public. After the Kennedy, we never told any president anything. Nixon knew because he was briefed as VP in 1952. That's how he knew where to take Jackie Gleason to Homestead Air Force Base to see the alien bodies we had storage there. And that's about it. What uh, say you, Art Bell? Can we brief the public? Yay or nay? My, my first response would be, uh, having heard even just a quarter of that information, if I really heard it from a legitimate government source, that I was about to be killed. I would assume I would be in mortal danger. Uh, I mean, it's just... Uh, <laughs> any any portion uh, of that information uh, would get a person killed if they if they knew it. Much less, uh, uh, I, it's just ludicrous, John. I would never be 
put in such a situation. I would never be at such a briefing because such a briefing is never and will never be made, ever. Okay, ever. Well, well, Art, here's the deal is people want to know. I, they say, I can take it. Tell me. I mean, the public can take it. Well, they, they can't. I, I agree. Okay, with now, the, wait a minute. Are you saying let's release it or not? You've been given this brief, and they, the government has decided, look, we're tired of covering this thing up. This Here's assumes that I really believe they would release it, as opposed to killing me, no, right? No, they wouldn't <laughs> kill you if they were giving you a briefing. they just say, here it is. No, I mean, once I said no, uh, yes or no, uh, well, I suppose no. Once I said no, then I'd have to be killed, wouldn't no, I? Because, no, Because no. other people have been killed. That was part of your briefing. Yeah, but uh, they quit that in 1972. Up until 1972, there was 572 people eliminated from the program because they they disagreed with the way it was going. But after that, they don't kill them anymore. What they do, I don't know. Uh, I have, you know, suspicions of what they do. But why do you imagine? Don't bring that into the argument. Why do you imagine they let people like you on radio shows like this and saying these things? The government, the the. The cover-up is so firmly in place now that it's not a threat to them. Doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, who, how many people are we talking? It doesn't matter. People listen to it and think it's interesting and go on their business. Well, that's but true. My point is that if you knew the whole story, you wouldn't be pushing for disclosure. No, I wouldn't. I, of course I would not. I, I believe that Brookings was accurate. In fact, I believe e even more than that. I've spent all these years getting emails from talking to people in the Bible Belt. John, I talked to a lot of them. I know how the fundamentalists feel, and it would it would turn us upside down. Okay, I agree with you. Now, last night I talked with the guy who's heading up the Disclosure Project, in Washington, D.C., and I read him the exact same thing I did to you, and he said, yeah, go for it, let's do it. Uh, you know, <laughs> you have a right to know. And I'm wondering, yeah. you know, how could you possibly think like that? Um, yeah, how, how can he? Um, I, I've, I've asked the same questions, uh, really, I have. And you get a, a wonderful speech in return that also makes sense, you know, and you get the patriotic angle, you get the... You know, we're, we're part of all that's happening, and we really do have a right to know about these profound issues. They're so profound that we have a right to know, and the argument sounds good. It really does sound good, but I also know what would happen if this information Okay, became... you're 100% right, and that's how I believe. Uh, and they bring up the argument, well, I'm tired of the government lying to us. Well, that's what governments do. That's what they're for. I mean, they lie to us continually, but on this particular issue, they're correct. Uh, you you pretty firmly believe that what you just laid out there, as it's a, it was a litany of horrors, to be sure, uh, is pretty much accurate, John. You really? Well, think I didn't put all the bad stuff in there, but you know, <laughs> that, <laughs> no, uh, that that's essentially what it is. I thought you were going over the top a little with the human mutilations. And Why? It's a fact. I mean, it happened. I'm. I hear these dark, quiet. Don't quote me, but there have been these things going on. Type conversations. People that I deal with who really do know what is going on have talked um, very quietly, John, about human mutilations. It's just kind of at, almost at the whisper in your ear stage regarding human mutilations. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, there's no way that the government, suppose they were trying to be forced to, to make a release, is to say, you know, okay, yeah, we, we, did, we do have something from Roswell, and there was an alien, but that's all we're going to tell you. Well, I call it the Pandora's box syndrome. You can't open it 